Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Take a good look at your current tax bill and you should notice that your Kansas City property tax bill has dropped. Last year, voters approved a restructuring of city taxes, and right now property owners, both commercial and residential, are seeing the first round of lower taxes. The owner of a home valued at $100,000 and a $15,000 car will see a $46 decrease in KCMO property taxes. And by eliminating the parkway, trafficway, and boulevard levies, the city's taxes are now less confusing for property owners and more efficient for the city to administer. The Municipal Court recently held a ceremony honoring 18 graduates of its Veterans Treatment Court and the Drug Court. These courts provide treatment options as an alternative to jail time. The Veterans Treatment Court offers substance abuse and mental health treatments to military veterans with depression, post-traumatic stress, or substance abuse. The Drug Court provides treatments to residents facing substance abuse problems. We all make mistakes, but how we deal with these mistakes is how we define our character. This process can be difficult and frustrating, but it gets easier. You just have to own up to it, show up, be on time, and be, on, and be positive. And thanks to the programs that, like these and others that the VA provides, we don't have to do it alone. Best wishes to everyone, and God bless. Semper Fi. The court has found that these therapeutic justice approaches help reduce repeat offenders while helping to turn people's lives around. The city's Rich Knoll Paysetter Award Review Board has awarded Kristen Danner of the General Services Department with the Rich Knoll Paysetter Award. As the city's assistant corporate safety manager, Danner helped coordinate the city hall's recent fire drill. Thanks to Danner's hard work and an eye for detail, the fire drill was a big success. The Paysetter Award program monthly recognizes city employees who are skilled in communication, customer service, teamwork, and leadership. The award is named in honor of former Assistant City Manager Rich Knoll, who served the city for more than 26 years. To learn more or to nominate an employee, visit kcmo.org slash pacesetter. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments for information. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. Here are some events taking place at city facilities that are guaranteed to brighten the winter gloom. Make plans now for the annual New Year's Eve celebration in the beautiful Grand Ballroom at the Kansas City Convention Center. Enjoy a fabulous dinner, party favors, photo booth, casino tables, character artists, and a balloon drop at midnight. The high energy Michael Beers Band will get the whole party dancing. Single tickets are on sale at the Municipal Auditorium box office, and party packages are available at the Kansas City Downtown Marriott. For reservations, call 816-421-3000. The 2014 Mid-America RV Show rolls into Bartle Hall from January 16th through 19th. This is the nation's largest consumer show dedicated to all things RV including accessories, resorts, and travel destinations. RV enthusiasts can check out the newest products and services on the market and view more than 200 units. Tickets are $10 with ages 12 and under admitted free. For show hours and more information, go to the show website. Don't miss Sister Act at the Music Hall on January 21st through 26th, featuring original music, by eight-time Oscar winner Alan Menken. Sister Act tells the story of Dolores Van Cartier, a wannabe diva whose life takes a surprising turn when she witnesses a crime. The cops hide her in the last place where anyone would think to look, a convent. Tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster.com and at the Municipal Auditorium box office. Take the first step toward a year of exciting outdoor adventures and attend the 60th Annual Kansas City Boat and Sports Show on January 23rd to 26th at Bartle Hall. Tickets are $10 with ages 15 and under admitted free. For show hours and more information, visit KansasCitySportsShow.com. To learn more about events taking place at Kansas City's Convention and Entertainment Facilities, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar. 
or call 816-513-5000. You're kind-hearted. You want to do the right thing. When it comes to helping those less fortunate, there are times you doing an act of kindness may simply perpetuate a problem and make it worse. Watch this. It really is more effective to give resources to agencies that are organized, coordinated, and work directly with folks than to hand it to them because one just doesn't know what one's supporting or where that money is actually going to end up. For all of us who receive support for helping the homeless in our community, uh, we're scrutinized uh, by any number of organizations, both private and public. And that's, I think, is what your impact is so much greater uh, going through that format. And there's so many, such a diversity of organizations out that you can pick that one that's working in the way in which, you know, you feel the most comfortable. Uh, and I think what folks don't understand is you really can be enabling people to stay in situations that are very dangerous to them, extremely dangerous to them, particularly to women, particularly to older individuals, and quite frankly, particularly to young people. And when I see a young person out in the street, and any of us who are encouraging that, we really are encouraging situations that we have no idea about, and that which have the, the most serious of ramifications. And a quarter, a dollar, five dollars, is not the solution. There are agencies that are out feeding the hungry every night of the week and they're out in vans so they go where folks are out in camps. What I see in uh, many emergency programs is quite frankly people are getting up to four or five meals. That, they're, that, that right now as opposed to being said you know why don't you get some help for your mental health issue? Why don't you get some help for substance abuse? Why don't you find housing? The, the, the entire day is caught up in moving from one free the service to another, be that just a bunk, be that uh, a food, but none of which is that sustaining uh, service that will lead someone to self-resiliency. And frankly, no one knows if an individual on the street holding a sign is what he or she represents themselves as being. We do know, quite frankly, that there is some trafficking involved, that there are individuals who take folks out, uh, drop them off at a spot, pick them up, and then get money from them, part of, kind of, part of the take. Uh, and whether those folks still are generally homeless and they're just sharing that money because they're getting the transportation to wealthier areas to get money, I don't know. But I also know that I see folks who are three, 300 yards from Restart, from City New Mission, from Hope Faith Ministries, who have their signs who are asking for things. And um, really, that is somebody who you may or may not be homeless. I've seen them teaching young people to do that. Uh, and it is counterproductive and frankly it's dangerous for both parties. If you encourage people to come to you and take something from the car, you are then uh, giving kind of a, a, a commitment that anybody who hands you something from a car is going to be helpful as opposed to trying to hurt you. And fr frankly, for women, for members of the LGBT community, uh, for younger people, we're putting them at risk. There is one way to solve homelessness and it's being uh, verified throughout the nation and that is to get people into housing as quickly as possible. Um, so it is not to hand things out to them, it is not even to feed them, it's to get housing. And, and many efforts that are happening with the best of intentions are actually getting in the way of getting people into housing. If you want to truly help, Give your time or donation to one of the many local organizations whose only goal is to help the homeless men, women, and children in Kansas City. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Hi, I'm Floyd Peoples. I'm the Fire Marshal for the Kansas City Fire Department, and I'm here today to talk to you about candle safety in the home. Number one thing to remember with candles is to never leave them unattended. 
Always make sure that somebody's in the room where there's a candle burning because it is an open flame. Number two, make sure it's in an appropriate container. That way you don't have an open flame that can actually have something touch it really easily. Thirdly, remember, a candle is unattended if you have fallen asleep. So if you're in a room where you're going to sleep and you have a candle, make sure that candle is out before you go to sleep. And then the fourth thing, if you can use a tea light that's actually a battery operated light as an alternative to an open flame, a candle, that's even more preferable for safety. From the Kansas City Fire Department, have a safe and happy holiday season. Thank you. In observance of Christmas and New Year's, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Wednesday, December 25th and Wednesday, January 1st. Also, curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day each of those weeks for some residents. For example, a resident who usually has Wednesday collection will receive that service on Thursday, December 26th and Thursday, January 2nd. Residents who have Friday collection will receive it on Saturday. Residents who usually have Monday or Tuesday collection will not be affected. In addition, the week following Christmas is a no tag period for trash collection in the city. During this period, residents may set out up to 15 bags or 500 pounds of trash without tags. Nonprofit organizations that host cultural, social, historic, educational, or recreational activities may apply for a grant from the city's Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. This fund is now accepting grant applications for activities taking place in March and April of 2014. Applications must be received by January 15th. For details, go to kcmo.org slash ntdf or call 816-513-4505. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org. Just scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner and click on the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.